Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. This is Rabbi Maurice Sklar, and uh, this is our Beit Rafa service. And the timing of these are, seems to be, since I'm coming to you every every evening, uh, we seem we on Fridays and Saturdays we begin the Shabbos or Shabbat, and we end it. So we're coming to the end of it this evening because it's from sundown to sundown. And uh, wow, everybody just jumps on. Hello, Barb and Ina and Sherry and Marilyn. I'm very glad to be with you again. It was another beautiful day today in Santa Maria, California. We just, we have so many uh, roses that just, you know, it's, <laughs> Uh, it's just amazing. So we've been, we've been putting them in vases and things. I ought to, I should have brought one up and to show you. I should need one in my room too. But uh, so we're enjoying spring here. And and uh, Rebecca, hello, honey. Sherry, Shabbat Shalom. And Darren and Becky and Blake, Shalom. Hallelujah. And Doris and Roger. And Ronald and Marthy, hello, hello. And Rebecca says, "Ood evening." I bet that's good evening. <laughs> and Christine Brown, shalom, honey. Good. I'm so glad you're with us. And uh, Ina, my faithful Baton Rouge friend, is hallelujah. Good evening, Maurice, and also to your dear wife and our Beit Rafa family. I do feel like it's a family, isn't it? You know, this has been uh, these almost uh, end of seven weeks now, 40-something, getting close to 50 nights in a row. It's like intensive care. I, I, You know, we've been in spiritual intensive care, and the Lord just says, keep sowing the good word of the Lord, keep blessing my people and and you know we had to practice and focus on the good things of god well i'm going to put on a, some music like i always do i hope you enjoyed it yesterday with the box chacon i probably should have practiced that a little bit more before i perform it it's it's different you know when you don't have the that's just my phone and the 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 microphone that's just a live violin what you get is what you get you know it's not a studio necessarily hello Ju julie and fabio mancini sounds like you might be from from italy perhaps gramacho wendell brock shalom shalom sir and margie edwards and juan derfitz bless you welcome i'm i'm glad you're I'm glad you're with me, and uh, <clears throat> of course, I usually end my day lifting your name up to the Lord. I pray, pray, pray for you and all, and just ask God to bless you and protect you and keep you. Dominique, bless you, honey, and Diana, Diana Irving, thank you. Peace to you, too. Hallelujah. Well, um, I have my skinny little reading glasses on but uh <laughs> oh i'm gonna put some new this is uh my songs of zion cd and uh many of you know that and have it and i have all of my i recordings and cds on my website sklar ministries and you're welcome to order them and download them we're we're in the process of getting all these orders filled my wife's been busy and so they'll be going out to you on Monday, and uh, I'm going to catch up. Praise the Lord. I need to, don't I? You know, there are advantages to these big, big ministry staffs and everything. They just always there, and you know they're on like, like it's the Albertsons here or Costco or something. But I'm not that way. I'm just me and Devora and. We're doing the best we can. And anyway, I still feel strongly that I'm to continue daily. And today, since it's the uh, it's it's Saturday, and I want to uh, start with we want to receive the communion, and and uh, and then I want to read you a story out of uh, 
my uh, my wife's rabbi uh, used to tell lots of old stories from uh, the old country of the Hasidic, uh, the ancestors of, of our Jewish heritage. And so his name was Shlomo Karlbach. And we, I have a, I'm going to read a story. This is not going to be real heavy today, I hope. But going into God's presence is, is always monumental. It's important. And we don't take it lightly. But, hallelujah. You know, there's been such a heavy teaching flow and uh, that's good. It helps us. You know where that shows up? It doesn't always, it's not always not spectacular in the moment. You know, a miracle is spectacular when God just, as he wills, he can do miracles and he does that. But you'll see a steady transformation, steady growth as God word, God's word gets implanted in you and you begin to practice it and live it and act on it day after day. And then you look behind you in six months or a year and you realize, wow, I'm not the same person. And I feel, also, I feel like I've been, I've been in a process myself of transformation. Not only is there a, another level of a, the glory and anointing in the earth, I believe, and on the ministry gifts of Yeshua, the body of Messiah, but there is uh, this wonderful growth, season of growth and uh you know, God wants us to grow up in Him, and He's giving us miracle grow. We're like we put this special food in our roses, so they, I guess, I, I don't do that, but uh, we have someone who comes in and does that, or, or Devorah, and you know. And but I tell you what, it makes all the difference to have the right nutrition and just steady watering and planting and sowing and reaping and day after day, and uh, that's how. That's how real increase comes. So anyway, you know, it's been a while since I've actually read the, the scripture for communion, one of them, and probably my favorite one is in 1 Corinthians. So I'm just going to read it to you, 1 Corinthians uh, 11, because everything we do should be based on God's word, everything. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. And it is written here, he says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Yeshua, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often, notice there is no restriction in time here, for as often I said, well, why do it once a month when every day, I want to do it every day because you know what? I need all... I, I need him every day. Hallelujah. So let's go to the table of the Lord every day. So we've been doing it. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do, do show, show the Lord's death till he come. And it says, uh, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Oh. But let a man examine himself, that means woman to man, kind, but every person examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Hallelujah. We need to discern the Lord's body. And it's interesting, verse 30 says, when we don't discern the Lord's body, we don't come with the right uh, heart attitude, and we don't, we, you know, we don't want to do it superficially, and we we need to understand what it means. And so that's why I explain it in a little bit. And we talk about healing and restoration and forgiveness. But we we really have to believe that we are receiving of his body. It's not a... It, for me, it is literal. And, you know, I, I know people have argued about that for centuries, whether it becomes actually the actual you know, body and blood, and I, I, to me, it doesn't matter. To 
to me, what matters is I'm doing this in obedience to him, and God says it is, so I receive. <laughs> I don't try to analyze it. I, I, I receive from him. Of course it's spiritual, but it's also physical, and it brings life to our whole being, and that's what we have to discern. And, and it says here, uh, when we don't, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, or many die before their time. That's what that means in the Greek there, sleep. Man, many are sick and weak, and some die. Well, then obviously there must be supernatural health and strength in, in, the, in the taking and receiving of communion. Of course there is. If, now, this is the key right here, verse 31. Glad I'm reading this because we're getting some revelation too. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. And he says, tarry one for another, hallelujah. We're not doing this to act, you know, it, we don't want to abuse it. The Corinthians were just, you know, feasting like they would at an idol uh, party instead of coming before the risen Savior. So there is reverence with it. But notice he says, if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. But you know what? That's very important. Every day, and when we come, especially when we come before the table of the Lord, we need to examine ourselves. We have to say, Lord, forgive me. Uh, you know what, I had, all right, here, I just show you, so, so I'm just honest with you, you know, I had, I had a little bit of attitude problem today, I got a little irritated at, uh, you know, <laughs> family, sometimes it's difficult, we have a divorce, mother, my mother in love, <laughs> and she got a little bit, uh, 91, you know, just daily, sometimes things rub the wrong way, or you know, whatever. And I realized, you know what, I got, I got irritated, I, I, I reacted, you know, well, Father, I'm sorry for that, I shouldn't do that. Uh, you know, and, and, and see, we have to adjust and repair and make things right. I, please forgive us, Lord, for the things that, that we, where we may, have, we may have come short. And Lord, forgive me for that today. And Lord, I just judge myself. I realize, Lord, without you, I can't. I need you every day. I can't make it without you. Please forgive us and cleanse us and bring healing to us. We are needy for you. And we want to join together. Did you realize, I just thought of this just now, that in the natural, when a husband and wife become one and the, the act of, of marriage, and, uh, when, when we come together, uh, that is that is a picture of Yeshua and his bride, his, his body. And so when we're doing this, this is like coming into intimate relationship with Yeshua. That's why, you know, you don't, you don't just, you know, women take time, you know, and Hallelujah. It takes time for us. And I'm not saying that it, and, you know, please. What I'm trying to tell you, it is union with God. And it's a sacred thing. It's something precious. So let's prepare our hearts now. And I'm going to, uh, I have experienced healing during the last 45, 6, 7, almost 49 days now. We're in the, the, in the time of the counting of the Omer in the Jewish uh, calendar. And we're probably in our twin, in the 20s, as far as days go, uh, way, coming up to the, the, the Shavuot, the next feast we have, uh, of, uh, and it's, the, it, it's uh, what we call the Day of Pentecost in the New Ten Testament. So anyway, we're just gonna get before God and. And we're going to enter into this, come into that, renew the covenant, renew the covenant. 
Haleluya. Oruka Tadanai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lechemin HaAretz. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And I'll say the Hebrew blessing over the wine as well. Oruka Tadanai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Oriv Kore HaGafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Hallelujah. So we're going to receive. This is the body of our Messiah Yeshua broken for us so that we could be made whole. This is the bread of heaven. This is the only food that will really satisfy you. We come into your presence. There is there is the anointing and the glory. Glow, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. There he is. Oh, Jesus, I love you. We just come and come into union with you. We're drawn into union. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. You loved us so. You gave yourself the Lamb of God. We partake of you now. Lord, heal every broken place in our lives. Bring shalom into our bodies and into our minds. Forgive us, Lord, where we have sinned and fallen short. Oh, Lord, we thank you for fortifying us from within. Take and eat it now. This is the body of Yeshua, our Messiah. Mm. Hallelujah. Someone's back is being healed right now. You had spasms in your back, like a, a pulsing spasm in your lower back. And it, it, it's leaving, it's gone. He just healed it. Uh, pinched nerve, sciatic problem. God is healing people in, the, in, the, in their backs and in their spine right now. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. That was just word of knowledge. <laughs> but you can receive whatever it is. And you know what, I've had um, the last couple of days, well, Lord, I receive that if I need the healing too, yes. Uh, thank you for healing my ear. But I had, I'd had a pain in my ear, like an ear infection. And sometimes that is uh, almost an intercessory thing. Someone, someone else might be having a, a problems in their ear, inner ear or something. So be healed in your ears right now of all, yeah, and allergies and infections in the head, in the face and in the sinuses and in the throat. Be healed, be healed, the one that is in, uh, uh, you were diagnosed with the uh, corona, but it has gone away, but you have been afraid ever since. Sorry, I had my hand on my face. God is delivering you from that fear, and uh, it's not coming back. Okay, so when I say that, I don't know if that is actually creating it at the moment, or God is just saying, don't, don't worry about it. He is our healer and his resurrection life through his broken body is flowing into you now. Be healed and made whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. <laughs> this is my favorite part. This is my this is my favorite part of our time together. Cause I I I get to come so close to the master. Oh I love him so much. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, there is a, yes, ministers who are watching, there's several ministers watching, particularly a, uh, there's a pastor who's been very discouraged. And recently, uh, because, you know, you haven't, we haven't been able to meet together. And then there's this discouragement. So I, th I think I'm just going to quit. Well, no, you're not going to quit. God says he's going to show you 
how to continue. If I can do this as a fiddle player, surely, a violin player, surely you can go on and let's use, you get back on, you get online, and you keep ministering, and you, you keep loving on your people, and keep caring for them. God says, nothing has changed. Nothing's changed. And the and in, in, Lord says he's going to provide for you. He's going to give you also a financial miracle in this next uh, week. So you just get, you get back up now and you go on. I don't know who, never had a word like that before, but I understand that. Sometimes I had to, I used to have to get up every single day and just walk on with Jesus. Just get up. <laughs> Why sit we here till we die? Let's get up. And you know what? The, you're going to see a new anointing and a whole, just the opposite of the devil lied to you that you're not important and all that. You know, oh, yes, you are. So you be encouraged now. And that goes for the dear ones. Don't be discouraged. That's why we're coming on intensive care every day. And you're coming to the table of the Lord with me. And we're going we're gonna to finish. We're going to finish well. We're going to finish strong. We're going to live long and finish strong. And we're going we're, we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. We're going to see the great grand finale. Oh, yes, we will. So, Yeshua said, this is the cup in my blood. This is the cup of the New Testament, the new covenant, which I pour out for you. I did that for you. Hallelujah. It is the cup of redemption, the cup of cleansing. Oh, Lord, forgive your people and cleanse them now. Forgive us, Lord. Of all the things we didn't know we did that we shouldn't have done or thought or said, forgive me, Lord. Thank you for washing us clean in your blood. I take my time right now. I know you're doing it with me, many. And if you're not, you know what? Tomorrow, come back and just pour a little, pour a little wine and and bread or, or grape juice if you don't like wine. Or, but come in, come to the table of the Lord. Oh my! You know, I don't know why I haven't done this before. Every day, every day is a new day, and God's covenant is for everlasting to everlasting. So receive, receive his precious blood. Be healed and forgiven. Be cleansed and made whole. Be energized. Become alive. Every dead place in your life. Come alive with the resurrection Zoe life of God. Yes, you can. Someone, yes, uh, that's why I'm, I've never quite done this many word of knowledge before this, but that's all right. The Lord uh, is saying somebody stumbled back into to, to a, a area you had victory, a, a, you know, a besetting thing. And God has forgiven you. You just get back up and you go on. Don't you worry. God says, I'm fortifying you from within. It's just like, a, you know, when a little toddler learns how to walk. He doesn't, you know, if, if he falls on his diaper well you know i'm not saying you're a little baby i'm saying if, if he falls he just he doesn't sit there and go oh i fell i could never get up no god's just saying well get up come on let's do it again let's practice let's get up again and don't you worry god's god's not angry with you he is walking with you and he rejoices in the progress that you have made so receive L'chaim, that means to life. Receive the life of Messiah. Amen. That sure felt good. Hallelujah. Margie Edwards wrote something. That word is for all the dear ones. Don't give up. That's what our enemies want us to do. Don't forget. God is with you. And God's word has a word for you no matter what you go through. See, that's the way we should be to each other. 
you know what? Anybody can find fault with themselves or with, I mean, well, with themselves too, but with another. But it takes, it takes Jesus in you to overlook the fault and love anyway and see the best. I, I heard uh, there's a, a great woman of God here, a couple that lives just right near us. Uh, the Goffs, Jeff and Cindy Goff. Cindy Goff is a saint, I tell you. But uh, she uh, she says, always look for the treasure in other people. Bring out the treasure in people. Don't don't point out all the areas where uh, where maybe they haven't arrived yet, because maybe you haven't arrived yet either. But God treats us that way. He sees the treasure in you, and I believe God's drawing out the, the treasure in each one of you. Justin Steckbauer says, we will see the rapture and participate in it. I believe that. I am, oh, I want to see him. You know, and you don't have to, fuss. when you see that word, don't go like that. Why? Because it's in the Bible. As the only debate some people seem to have is over when it happens, not if it happens. We shall be changed. We shall be caught up. We shall see him in the air. It says so. First Thessalonians 5, it's in, in the Bible. It's there. So don't worry so much about when and sequence and, you know, the main thing is be ready. Watch and pray. See, God is getting us ready to see him. And it really shouldn't matter. It really shouldn't matter how much you're going to tribulate first. Because it's only for a short time. We shall see him. We shall see him as he is. And until then, let's occupy till he comes, okay? Hallelujah. Bless Faye Kreiner. Hallelujah. There's another woman of God at the healing rooms. Faye Clausen Kreiner. And uh, she's, uh, she's a wonderful lady in the Lord. We went to Israel together with our group. And Sherry Vest. Hallelujah. I just rejoice when I see your name. Hallelujah. All right, listen. We're going now. We're going to receive our spiritual vitamins today. All right, so this is, um, I'll just remind you, some people, you know, they're tuning in for the first time, and some people uh, just need to be reminded. And uh, I really recommend this man, this author, his name is James Riddle, and he has compiled uh, uh, the Complete Personalized Promise Bibles. There are about four of them. I think Harrison House publishes it, if I remember correctly. Uh, uh, but the two that I am using to take our vitamins with, this is every promise in the Bible, followed by a, a prayer and a declaration uh, uh, for healing. And so I have one for healing and one for financial increase. And I've learned, by God's grace, to be a good spiritual farmer. <laughs> Everything in the kingdom is sowing and reaping. Everything is. Uh, and that's how increase comes. That's how, and God's word, one time the Lord said to me, my word has heaven in it. This is heaven in seed form. And what God wants us to do is plant all those wonderful promises God gave us and water it, put it in our heart until it's blooming like all those roses. Just, just, he wants you to flourish, even in the midst of the darkness and the famine or the, the turmoil. Hallelujah. You can flourish. You don't, you're not subject to this world system. You're not. You're not a part of this world anymore if you're born again. If you're not born again, you need to ask Yeshua into your heart and receive a brand new life. But if you have, you've been born of this word, of the un incorruptible seed. And he said, every day, uh, Maury, every day go on and, and just keep sowing and sowing and sowing God's word, the good word of God, so that, so that 
it, it's when fear comes or when turmoil, the storm hits, you can build your house on the rock and you can be standing. You don't have to go down the river. <laughs> when the river hits, you can build your dig deep and just stand firm. Stand, having done all to stand. So we're going to look now at, um, we're going to look at our healing promise and we're going to, and uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll speak it and then I, I'll lead you in a prayer. We'll just plant that seed deep in our hearts, okay? This is today's. Now it's interesting, the healing promises, if you'll notice, I'm still in Genesis for the, 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 the financial, the prosperity book. Why? Because there's so many financial promises in the book of Genesis. Not quite as many specifically about healing. So we're up to Deuteronomy now. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 29, since we started. So I'm going to read that to you. Deuteronomy 5, 29, it is written, Oh, that this is God talking. Oh, that they had such a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep all my commandments. Why? That it might be well with them and with their children forever. Notice what God wants. He wants the best for you. He wants you to be well. He wants you to be, uh, to have every need met. He wants you to be free of all torment. And that's God's will. That's what he wants. And, and, and so we're, gonna, we're just gonna receive that promise and just be like a little child right now. If you, now, I'm gonna tell you a little child, you know, four or five years old, daddy says, to Tommy, you know, I'm going to get you a fire engine. <laughs> Maybe the kids don't like fire engines anymore. I'm going to give you, I remember what I used to really love was Tinker Toys. Remember those? My dad, one time, he said, uh, for your birthday, I'm going to get you Tinker Toys. A whole big thing of it. And I wanted more Tinker Toys. Well, that just thrilled me. I didn't question for a moment that my daddy was going to bring home Tinker Toys. If he said he's going to do it, I just know he's going to do it. And uh, Or for your birthday this year, I'm going to take you to Six Flags Over Georgia. This was when we were in Atlanta. Well, unfortunately, that didn't happen because my dad had something that came up. But that was so devastating to me because I was probably six years old, because I had so looked forward to that. But your heavenly Father never promises anything without doing it. And if it, if it comes a little later than you think it should, still, God always, he never forgets. He's not, he's not a man that he should lie. That's why we can trust. This is God speaking to you. He's a good daddy and he wants you well. So we can trust that. And there was somebody watching just now. Sometimes I wish God would turn this off, this word of knowledge. I hear people say things and think things. It's just, and, and you really, you really, you think I am, um, you think I'm trying to manipulate. That's just a wrong spirit on you because I'm really not. I'm really, I really do love you and this is sincere. Most of you know, but this, just for that one, I just want to tell you, I, I'm not doing that. I'm really not doing that. I'm here to give something to you, not take something from you. And that, and God really does love you. And forgive those people that abused their position and, 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 and abused their power in the gospel. Yes. There is power in the gospel and authority, but it's to do good. And please know that, please know that I, I care about you. And uh, I'm just exactly this way. If you see me, you see me uh, three hours from now. I'm not, I'm not putting on any kind of act here. Yeah. Okay, so just for, for right now, just put it in neutral and just, if you want to continue to watch, you can. Nobody's making you stay. <laughs> but 
but I'm sure glad you're here. All right, so we're going to claim this. Uh, we're going to pray this promise. The Bible says that the power of death and life is in the tongue. So the way you plant God's word in your heart and promises is by saying it. Hallelujah. So just say, Abba, Father, say this out loud so you can hear it. You believe what you say faster than anybody else. So Abba, Father, that means Daddy God. Hallelujah. You are a good daddy. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you. Abba, Father, in Yeshua's name, I pray and I thank you that I sense your heart in your word. Like a good father, you just want your children to listen and obey. You don't give commands for the command's sake, but so we can live the abundant life you have called us to. Father, I know that you are tending to my best interests. Your compassion for me is endless, and your heart's desire is to bless me in every way. Therefore, you have my heart completely. I will do what you tell me to do so. I will do what you tell me to do so that it will go well with me and my children after me forever. I declare in faith I have a heart for my Father. I keep his word and follow his ways. By his precepts, it goes well with me and my children after me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's uh, let's go over. I have it all on my this Kindle book, ebook thing. So we're going to now. Well, where did it go? I just had it. You know, I remember when I was in school, we had a pad and a pencil and with an eraser on it that looked like it, the top of. Uh, remember those orange erasers that looked like the top of Snoopy's doghouse. <laughs> That's what we had, but now the world has changed. I almost wish we had that, that time we used to have. It was a different school experience for sure. But now everybody's getting homeschooled, so that's actually a step in the right direction in my opinion. Okay, this is from James Riddle's book on Complete Personalized Promise Bible for Financial Increase. You know, the number one need that God's people have is in the financial realm. That's why there's so many promises in the Bible about your provision. And the enemy fights you there, probably more than any other, but he's a good provider and he's providing for you and me. So let's look now. Um, all right. Sorry, I. Okay, we're up to Genesis chapter 26, verses 12 through 14. See how many promises there are? And we've just done the same one of each every day? Well, we're still in Genesis. We're not even halfway through. That's how many promises there are. Okay, here it is. It is written, then Isaac sowed in that land. Remember, that was the land of the famine, when it was famine all around. And received in the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew. That's you. Until he became very great. For he had... <coughs> Just in case you think it's all spiritual. <laughs> well, it is spiritual, but it's also down here. I believe in pie in the sky, but I also believe in steak on the plate. Glory to God. I can't wait for Chaco's to open so I can have a steak on the plate again. That's an amazing restaurant. I couldn't think of the name a little while back. It's that great steak restaurant. So God wants you to have <coughs> more than enough. <coughs> He likes it to take good care of you. So when the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great, Isaac had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. 
So we pray, Abba Father, in Yeshua's name, I thank you that I do and will receive the maximum yield from the seed that I sow in the same year I sow it, just like our father Isaac. You bless me continually. You make my name great. You give me a great store of people who offer me their services. And you bless all of my production. Because of your anointing, my substance increases so much that my enemies look upon me with jealousy and envy. Well, we don't want, I don't want anyone getting in jealousy and envy. But, well, and someone just actually said it out loud just now. He actually said it out. Well, do you, you, don't you, don't you see what's happening right now? You think that's, I said, yeah, that's why I'm sowing it. This is, this is what you need. Yeah. God's going to provide for you through his promises, through his word. Sure he will. You know, I've been through, just like Paul said, I've been through times of plenty and I've been through times of uh, lack, sure. Or I've been times, he says, I've been abased and I've abounded. In all things I've learned to be content and I've learned, I've learned to live in the kingdom. So you know, it's something you learn. You finally stop worrying. And the wonderful thing that happens is you just keep, just keep coming back, keep, keep listening to God's word. And what begins to happen is your heart transfers. Once your heart transfers out of the world system and economy and dependence upon this people or your job, and it transfers into my God really is there, he's real, and he really does provide for me. When that happens, a peace comes on you. Because Yeshua said, are you worried about food and clothes? He said, first of all, well, we need to make a study of the, the birds and the bees. No, <laughs> we need to make a study of the birds. He said, go out and look at the birds. If you're worried that you don't <clears throat> have enough food or you're not... They, not, they don't sow and reap, but they are not the same level of creation that we are. God gave us a privilege of doing that. But even if you don't do that, even, even if we're in disobedience, our people in the wilderness for 40 years, God still provided for them every day. Even when they were not, even when they complained and grumbled and, and you know, and a lot of God's people, if you'd, follow them around with a hidden camera and microphone after they get out of their uh, church or they, they get out of uh, in public where they're behaving themselves and you start to listen to what they say and what they do and what comes out of their mouth you'll see that they're getting exactly what they say you get exactly what you say not just when you're a goody goody two shoes but we all can do that, you know, the religious thing, put on an act. For a little while, that's not too hard, but it's, it's when we get in the pressure situations of families and family and the conflicts and the, that type of thing. That's where the test of faith comes. And the best thing you can do in those situations, if you have all kinds of emotional storms raging and inside of you and you're mad and you don't know why, you know, whatever attitudes. is uh, The wisdom of God says in the book of Proverbs, if you thought evil, lay your hand on your mouth. Don't express it. And it will die unborn and the devil won't get an inch out of you. He can't get in if you don't, if you don't, give voice to it. What gives him authority is when you say, it's always the, no, when you start to, when you start to, to kvetch, that's when he says, aha, you know, he's, you know, now I can, now I can get in there and steal, kill and destroy. Well, don't give him any place. Just keep your mouth shut. Boy, that's easier said than done, isn't it? Well, let's declare these. 
I tried to go a little quicker, but then God has me sit on things and kind of just kind of uh, let it soak down inside of you. It's not the Bible won't do you any good till it gets down inside of you. I say that almost every day. Got to get it down inside of you. That takes daily practice, 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 over and over. Hallelujah. Just say this, Abba Father, in Yeshua's name, I declare in faith, the Lord has blessed me with abundance. He has? Oh, yes, he has. You already have abundance. Maybe it's not manifesting right away, but it's there. And, and you know what? We have to live as if. Because remember the little boy who's going to get to go to Six Flags on his birthday? Daddy said it. I'm looking forward to it. It's already done. I'm getting my tinker toys. <laughs> That's how we have to believe, like little children. The Lord has blessed me with abundance. His favor finds a home in me. He receives the seed that I have sown and blesses it so that it will bring forth the maximum yield. He has taken hold of me in his powerful arm and promoted me. In him I find wealth and position. I have been separated from the world. He has placed within me the special and unique supernatural qualities. These special and unique supernatural qualities. My supply is great with his blessing in my life. Hallelujah. Be blessed. The blessing of the Lord. He makes you rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Now, all I'm doing is, is reading you the Bible. Oh, you're one of those. Yeah, I'm one of those. <laughs> Bible believers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hallelujah. So, anyway. Well, that was, there's our spiritual vitamins for today. Praise the Lord. Well, you know, I also remember as a child, I had a fourth grade teacher and uh, I really loved her I didn't know at the time she was actually a very strong believer and I could feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in her classroom and she'd pray for all of the students but I just I just really loved her she was so sweet she was so nice and but there was a, there was this love of Jesus that would come through. I wish all my teachers were that way, especially my violin teachers. They they weren't always as <laughs> kind. But anyway, there would after lunch we'd come back and and Mrs. Nolan would read uh, would re read a chapter out of a novel or a, or a story, and she the whole year. And we put our head on our desk and just listen to the story and. You know what I remember? I still remember the, the books. I remember she read The Borrowers to us. Remember that book? And she read A Wrinkle in Time and some other just novels. But, I, you know, there's something about stories. And um, Rabbi Shlomo would say that this was my wife's rabbi, Shlomo Karlobach, who was a, a very, um, very mystical man. He was a worshiper and a singer, and he would just go into that place of deep worship like David in the Psalms. And, uh, but he said this, he said, God, he would tell stories, that's what I'm trying to say. He said, God is the greatest storyteller of all. And the Bible is a book of stories, and God loves to tell stories. And we remember, we remember through See, we didn't have books for hundreds of years. Even in our people, in the Jewish world, we had, it was transmitted orally from generation, you know, and it was stories. You remember when you would be at a camp or some campfire and you'd tell stories and not necessarily all ghost stories, I hope, but, you know, but they, it was, it was something that the kid in you just loves well we're still we learn and we remember through stories sometimes better than we do through through any other way and he was a 
this this man was very special and I I know I'll see him when I get to heaven so this is uh, this this story is from his book Shlomo stories everybody knows that's the name of the story so can I read you a story <laughs> I, I, I'm not talking down to you. I'm just, I'm a little kid too. So uh, we never stop being little children, according to 1 John, the letter of 1 John. It says, little children, keep yourself from idols. So no matter how mature we get, there's still a part of us that's a little child. And we're always God's little children, always. And that's okay. You don't have to. The greatest thing about heaven is you don't have to hide there. Nobody's going to hurt you. You don't have to defend yourself. And you can get in this secret place. When I, when I start these, the bubble comes around me and I feel like I get to go to heaven for a couple hours every day. What better way can I spend my time than that? And then I just say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he says, well, on Saturdays, why don't you read him a story? He said that to me last week. I started, right? Uh, last Saturday. And, and... You know, I said, oh, you know, I thought, you know, okay, we're going to, you know, because I, I want to, I want to, uh, you know, be diligent and all that. And I said, what do you want me to do, Lord? And I thought he'd say something like, you know, okay, well, you know, like he does. He'll, he'll give me revelation things. He said, I want you to read him a story. I said, okay. And so we're going to do that on the, our ending of Shabbat. And the sun's gone down probably where you are, uh, in America at least, I'm all the way out west here, but uh, it's it's getting low, so, but we're still in Shabbat, at least I am. All right, everybody knows, everybody knows that the holy Reb Shmuel Kamenka was one of the greatest pupils of Rabbi, R Rabbi Herschel Nedvorner, who in turn was a pupil of the Holy Baal Shem Tov. That's sort of the, the father of the Hasidic movement of uh, the Jewish world. Reb Shmuel was holy, but he had one sickness, one craziness. All right, I can say it this way, and you, 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 Reb Shmuel was holy, but he had one sickness, one craziness. <laughs> he gave everything away. Nothing was left in his house to eat or drink, nor was there ever money to buy more. His food and that for all of Shabbos was on credit. The Rebbe was in such debt that the grocer, grocer the, the butcher, and all the shopkeepers finally refused to give out any more food until the Holy Kamenka paid his bills. <laughs> Uh, Reb Shmuel's wife came home crying. His Hasidim, or his his uh, dear ones, <laughs> his uh, pupils, or his disciples, his congregation, heard of their Rebbe's predicament and organized an emergency campaign. In one week, they were able to collect 10,000 rubles for the Holy Rav Kavenka, enough to pay the Rebbe's debts and to support him, his family, and his hevra through many months of Shabbosis. At 12 noon, the Hasidim proudly presented the Rebbe with the money. At a quarter past 12, you got it, I'll, I'll go on in English, I mean go on me. At a quarter past 12, the Rebbe's shamas or assistant, it's like the associate rabbi, if you will, his, his assistant was told the good news. Overjoyed, he came to the Rebbe. Rebbe, please give me the money to pay all your bills. Let's see, we need a hundred rubles to settle accounts with the butcher. I'm sorry, but you're ten minutes too late. Too late? How is that possible? Two minutes after I received the money, a poor man showed up at the door needing a dowry for his daughter. So I gave him the 10,000 rubles. <laughs> in those days, in order to get married, you had to have a, a, a dowry. And this, this 
So he gave the entire <laughs> the whole thing away for this poor man. If the Rebbe's generosity wasn't too much for his shamas, it was certainly too much for his Hasidim. They stormed into the Rebbe's presence and told him face to face, Rebbe, please, you know we love you, but you're overdoing it. The first schleffer who comes along and asks you, all right, give him five rubles, give him 500 or even a thousand, but don't give him the whole 10,000. The Holy Kamenka sighed. It's crazy, I know it's crazy, but I can't help myself. I must give everything away because this is the great teaching I received from my Rebbe, the Holy Nedvarner, one of the highest pupils of the Holy Baal Shem. I was barely 17 when I came to him. After having searched months for a Rebbe holy enough to take me by the hand and lead me into the palace of wisdom, to teach me the secret of serving God, I felt he was the one. I didn't have much contact with the Rebbe at first, but from the Heliga Nedvorna's followers, I began to learn what true holiness meant. They shared with me many secrets, especially the importance of saying to Helam, the Psalms, speaking, the, praying the Psalms. Every Friday morning, they said, wake up early, immerse yourself in holy water, pure rain water in the mikveh, then recite the whole book of Psalms without stopping. Have you ever done that, by the way? I have. It takes around five hours. <laughs> but like I said yesterday, I was desperate. <laughs> wow. But what I tell you, after the third book, I know this sounds little, but after the third book, you're speaking the Psalms, my whole body starts vibrating. And every, everything in me, Every, all oppression would leave and break after the first hour and a half. Then if you keep going, you, you wind up in heaven <laughs> by the end. Now, you don't have to do that every day, but let me tell you something. God's word is the greatest power in the universe. And the Psalms are, are oh, they're a key. You ought to listen to some of uh, the, the beautiful psalmist that, that's with us, Julie Meyer. How she sings the psalms. Wow. Mm. You know, when you start singing the psalms, that's special too. It's, it, there's something about it. And the Jews might know more than you might think. Well, we have a... Well, be careful. <laughs> Don't boast against the root. These are the fathers. These are the ones that brought us, brought us salvation. Yes, they did. They brought us Yeshua. They brought us the Holy Book. Oh, hallelujah. The Holy Word of God. They were stewards of the precious things. Still are. God hasn't fired them yet. And he never will. Please, Lord. I remember Pastor Benny said, please, God, don't fire me. <laughs> well, he's not going to fire you, but, but he hasn't. He hasn't rescinded anything he promised to Israel and the Jews. All right, so anyway, every Friday morning, recite the whole book of Psalms without stopping. If you do so without interruption, without talking to anyone, your soul, your soul will be purified enough to receive the holiness of Shabbos or Shabbat. Or, now, again, of course, we're not doing that to earn anything. But we... See, some of these men and women, especially the men of God, you know, they, in fact, the women, the Orthodox Jewish women, recite the whole book of Psalms once a week. They go through it every single week. And they have 14 children, and they take care of everything and keep all the, the ordinances. And I, I, they're, that's superhuman. There's no way any woman could do that without supernatural grace. There's no way. It's way, 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 way. And yet, and yet, see, God gives grace outside of the boxes we think he can't. Oh, he does. Oh, yes, he does. Anyway, some of you need to, to take off, take, get out of the religious box, whatever, 
and begin to love like God. And then a whole new world will open up to you. All right, so where am I? Now, of course, this is extreme, right? You'll be prepared for the, for the Shabbos. Uh, uh, Rebbe and Shabbos, that's just a different, um, you know, from, from Russia and Eastern Europe, different sects use different uh, certain uh, Yiddish and Hebrew words. They say them a little different. So, so, so here we go. Every Friday I began the Book of Psalms, but somehow something always interfered. I could never finish on time. So one Friday, I woke up especially early after going to the mikvah. That's, um, that's like a, a, a washing, uh, you, uh, like baptism, except it's a morning uh, ritual that many Orthodox do of, of just uh, washing their hands, washing their face, and, and saying. So anyway, after and this is actually a public place with, for repentance, mikvah. And saying my morning prayers, after going there, I began to recite the Psalms again. Everybody knows there are 150 Psalms and that it takes hours to recite them. I had already reached the 140th chapter without stopping when the Rebbe's Shamas came racing into the room and shouted at me, Shemulek, the Rebbe's calling you, come instantly. It was a great privilege to be summoned by the Rebbe, but I wanted to finish my psalms. So, as I prayed, I took a scrap of paper and quickly wrote, Helga Rebbe, Holy Master, I, I'll come in a, in a few minutes as soon as I finish my Tehillim. The Shamas servant disappeared with the note. Two seconds later, he was back. The Rebbe says, either you come now or don't bother to come at all. What could I do? Obviously, if the Rebbe, who was so holy, found it necessary to interrupt my psalms, something must have happened. I ran at top speed to the Rebbe's room, imagining that the greatest miracle in the world had happened, that Messiah had come, or at least Eliyahu Hanovi Elijah the prophet, at least him, you know. <laughs> At that moment, I was full of love for my Rebbe. I, would, I was so full of love for my Rebbe, I would have done anything for him. But when I ran into the Rebbe's room, who did I see stretched out on the floor, crying and out of control, but Moishala the drunkard. Sweetest friends, let me tell you about Moishala. We, the Jewish people, are not famous for our drinking. But in every little city, there's always one who feels called upon to drink for all the Jews. <laughs> for the sake of heaven. It has been said that there are those who drink for the Jews of an entire city and others with greater capacity who drink for those of the whole world. But Moishala was on such a level that he drank for every Jew since the time of our father Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> he had a drinking problem, this fellow. And Moishala was crying, groveling, mamash, oi, before the Rebbe. The Rebbe saw me and called me over to him. Shmulik, he said. Moishala is crying because he has no money for Shabbos. He's a drunkard and no one will give his wife anything, free or on credit, for their feast. See, the, the, the Shabbat dinner, the Shabbos dinner, on Friday night was was so special and most of those that were in the shtetl had very, very little and they were, you know, they were just surviving. If you ever saw Fiddler on the Roof, you you know, that's kind of the way it was for hundreds of years. Uh, and so, but, <clears throat> so, so I want you to walk around town. I want you to walk around town and collect tzedakah on his behalf, Sadaka. Only whatever you do, don't hand the money directly to Moishala, give it only to his wife. Sadaka is giving. <clears throat> I was aghast, beside myself. 
The Rebbe couldn't wait seven minutes until I finished reciting my psalms before ordering me to waste my time on this drunkard? What kind of Rebbe was this? A man obviously insensitive to my needs. Insensitive wasn't even the word. The man didn't know what I needed. Just when I was on the brink of holiness. <laughs> oh, that's funny. He sent his shamas to knock me down to the lowest level where I should spend my Friday afternoon fundraising for a drunkard. I was furious and filled with resentment. You ever been that way? Oh, my. The whole time I spent walking around town collecting for Moishua's feast. I kept asking myself, who needs this? By Friday afternoon, when I'd handed the money to Moishua's wife, I'd already made up my mind that Saturday night, when we could travel again, I'd take off and look for somebody else to fix my soul. All, <laughs> he was so mad at the rabbi. All Shabbos I was angry. I didn't look at the Revi once, and he didn't look at me. Right after Havdalah, that's where we are now, the, the end of the Shabbos, uh, I packed my belongings. I had just closed the door to my room and was standing with my bundle in my arms when the shamus again came flying down the hall. Shmuelik, where are you going? The Rebbe wants to see you. I went with him, but only because I was determined to give the Rebbe a piece of my mind. Before I could say a word, the Rebbe addressed my complaints. Shmuelik, do you really think I don't know what you're feeling? But the truth is, God didn't need you to recite the Psalms as much as Moishua the drunkard needed you to collect for his wife. God has time, but a man as broken as Moishua has no more time. Shmuelik, let me give you a teaching I received from the Holy Baal Shem. There is a saying of our fathers, if you want to serve God, eat bread, drink a little water, and lead the life of pain. What does this mean? That God created us and this world so we should spend our lifetime suffering? No, not at all. The Holy Val Shem, who learned this teaching directly from Eliyahu Hanovi, from Elijah, took the words in this passage to mean if you see someone in pain, give him life. For what is the closest way to God? Giving life. And everybody knows, the holy Kamenka told his Hasidim, that for me to give away a few rubles to lift someone up is nothing compared to my Rebbe's way of giving life. It wasn't just once in a while. He was always this way. The orphan Fegela lived at the mercy of the holy Nidvorner. This child was beautiful. She had the face of heaven, but Nevach. She was so paralyzed, she could barely walk. The day after Rosh Hashanah, the Rebbe secretly called me in and said, Shmulik, take these 20 rubles, get Fegel's measurements without her knowing. Ask the tailor to make her a winter coat out of his finest fabric. When he is finished, bring it home and hide it in my closet until I tell you to bring it to me. On Yom Kippur, shortly before Kol Nidre, that's a, a song, a, a holy song that that is sung or, or played on an instrument uh, uh, on the Day of Atonement, Kol Nidre. We all came to the Rebbe to receive his blessing. Not only his Hasidim were present, but the townspeople closest to him and their children. Everyone was crowded around the holy Reb Herschel, because Fegela was crippled, she was the last to reach his side. By the time she stood before him, her face was covered with tears. Helga Rebbe, holy master, she cried. You've cured the whole world with your blessings, but I still have such pain. I beg you, make me well again. The holy Rebbe gave me a sign to fetch the coat. He put it around the child himself, then stepped back and exclaimed, Fegela, do you know how beautiful you are? Fegela, you are so beautiful, if only you could see how beautiful you are. And the Rebbe kept walking around Fegela 
as she stood before him in her new coat, round and round, admiring her, repeating for all to hear, so beautiful, if only, Fegele, you know how truly beautiful you are. The Rebbe did not stop praising Fegele until her tears subsided and she began to laugh. So you see, Chevra, the holy Kamenka explained to his Hasidim, I cannot help myself. When I see anyone in pain, I must give them everything. I must give them life. Isn't that a beautiful story? Boy, I feel the anointing on that just as strong as I did for the communion. Glory to God. So, that's a Shlomo story. Isn't that beautiful? Again, look around you. See someone suffering worse than you. Get your focus off yourself. Go help them. And joy will come like no other joy there is. The highest honor God has given us is to be able to give life to the suffering. That is a beautiful example of the love, the love of God, the love of God, the love of Yeshua in us. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen could ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair weighed down with care God sent his son to redeem. His erring child he reconciled. The saints and angels song. The love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless, how strong. <clears throat> Is there any fagolas around that you can find? <laughs> Go love them and the love of Father God will pour out of you and you get to taste it when it's coming out. This is what I'm addicted to on this Beit Rafa broadcast. I'm addicted to that love. I'm not addicted in a bad way, a good kind. This, oh, and it, I, I end up, I end up at the end of these hour or two, however long it is, and I'm so full of joy. And I, f I feel like I'm bursting. Why? I finally realized, you know, the worst thing I can do is sit around and just bottle it all up. And uh, I have to flow. That's why God saved me. I mean, otherwise, I'd, I'd, I don't want to be on this planet. Why? I've been to heaven. It's so wonderful. I would rather stay there. And then God's showing me how to live there anyway while I'm down here until I get my work done. All right. Well, listen, you have a wonderful evening and <clears throat> start to your week. And uh, hallelujah. I can't, I can't help myself. <laughs> I have to give, I have to give it all, all the time. Give it all. And you'll make a discovery. You cannot give away. You can't give it all away. You just can't do it. I dare you to try. <laughs> you just can't do it. Oh, hallelujah. And what we have to do is get into this lifestyle of giving. And then you get excited because you say, well, what's going to happen now? And I feel so good. It's better to what? Give than to receive. It's more blessed. That means God blesses the socks off of you. That's the secret. And you just can't outgive the master. You can't you just can't do it. It's wonderful. Hallelujah. Well, I love these stories. I wish I could have met him in person. I've met him in a vision one time. Uh no, I've seen him come to some of my meetings. You have? Yeah, I know. That sounds strange, doesn't it? I don't quite understand it, but he's in heaven, and he knows Rabbi, Sh Rabbi Shlomo was a very great man. I wish more Christians could be like that. I tell you what, when you get into this love of God realm, 
you just shoot up like a rocket. There's no limit to what God can do through a man or woman like that. May God fill you full of his love. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you shalom, peace. May God keep you. Keep you out of discouragement. Lift you up out of despair. Bring you hope where there seems like there is no hope. May you taste the love of God and find that hope that sustains and fortifies down on the inside. That it really is worth it. It's worth it even if I have to get up again for the umpteenth time. Well, get up anyway. You just walk with the king and be a blessing. You walk, you walk on with the Lord. Don't you quit. God's, God, is, God is providing for you. We're going to have a good summer. I believe things are opening up in the natural and business will, will uh, come back and, you know, commerce and whatever, all these areas. And uh, we'll get out of our homes. And uh, it's not over yet, okay? So don't, but don't despair. There's no reason to despair. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on the Lord just one step at a time. One day at a time, you know? You don't have to try to, to, to fix everything in your life in one day. Just ask God to show you. I tell you what, ask God to show, show you somebody who could use a, an email or a, or, a, or a Facebook or a, or a phone, phone call or, or go, you know what? Go buy a gift for somebody and have them had it sent to their house, you know. But a thoughtful one, like that, like that winter coat. But we even have a greater thing. We can bring the miraculous to people. Yes, we can. And those days are here as well. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I tell you what, I like the Shlomo stories. And uh, let me know if you like that. Now, this week, I am going to, uh, this next week we're in now, uh, I, I want to do a teaching. I might do it on live here, but I'm going to do a special teaching just on how to receive the infilling, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And how easy it is. And, and I believe God, if you desire to receive uh, your prayer language and, the, and this miraculous realm to walk in this realm of the gifts of the Spirit, it's for you. It's for all of God's children. Uh, and if, 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 you know, we might do a special class for that. I might record it. I don't know. But I'm... I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm on your trail, I mean, you know, the hound dog, you know, so I know, I know, about 10 of you for sure, and there's many more that, I know 10 of you because uh, you've, you've mentioned it, but uh, about that, but there are more, that means there's more, if there's 10, there's probably 100 or more, and you know what, by God's grace, I seem to have this ability, when I was in churches, I'd, I'd get them all filled with the Spirit <laughs> because I can break people in that had 30 years of anti-tongues, fear, doctrine preached at them. I can still break you through by God's grace. And it's, it's, it's learning how to respond from inside instead of the mind. That's all it is. And learning what to do. All right, so this week I want to do that for you. Okay, so listen, I want you to, I'm, what I've begun to do is I'm going to, I sow financially every day. 
I will not do, I will not tell you to do what I don't do. I'll do it and I'll go in deeper and more as much as I can. But I'm sowing every day. And you know what? I'm reaping every day. And I said, why didn't I do this before? So I tell you what, the fastest way to increase financially is start giving financially. And so, you know, if you can, go to, go to uh, Sklar Ministries. And if you, God tells you to, give, uh, give uh, uh, sow a seed, give a gift. Uh, fi financially and watch what happens <laughs> it opens you up and for that matter give everything give love give time give give uh, forgiveness to people that don't deserve it that's hard isn't it give live to give all the time everything everything just I dare you try to give everything away like the like the Rebbe you just can't do it God has a bigger shovel than you. You give it out the front door and God gives it out the back door. Hallelujah. So, and uh, I have, all the music stopped. I forgot to turn it back on. But uh, I have some wonderful music. I have uh, classical music. I have Jewish music. I have soaking music. I have praise and worship. And uh, pray for me, please. Uh, pray for me. There is no more anyone weaker or more needy without Jesus I, than me. I know that. I don't boast of anything except I know him. I can boast in that. Paul did. Said I, I boast in my weaknesses in the sense that I know when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And I'll stay right there so that the power of God may flow through me. Hallelujah. I promise not to hurt you best I can. I love you, and I'll see you, uh, Lord willing, tomorrow. And uh, I hope you feel lifted and the, and the pressure and the warfare. Sometimes I go through an intercessory warfare. I know, it's like a burden, and I just have to pray it through. And I know, I know I'm getting clearer when it's for somebody else, like all the pain left my ear. <laughs> Or almost all of it, yeah. So, glory to God. I love you. Have a wonderful evening. And I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. Good night.